Hello and welcome to another installment of Force 13's live updates, and we are live this evening talking about all the goings on in the world of today, typhoons. Uh, that's what we're tracking right now. Uh, several storms that are active in the Pacific, east and west actually. There is potential in the east, but at the moment it is all going on in the west, with um, starting west to east, tropical storm um, Linfa. Uh, near uh, getting near Taiwan now, um, but Typhoon Chanham and Typhoon Nanka are the strongest ones that we are looking at in the next few days, um, which could pose real threats to Japan and to China. My name's Nathan Foy. I'm joined by um, a few people this evening. Daniel, hello. Thanks for joining us. Hello. Oh, hi. Um, more like Daniel's head. Sorry, we had you on the low there. Say that again. More like, more like Daniel's head. Inca. Yes, indeed. Can't see my body, can you? <laughs> no, no, we can't. Um, I'm sorry for that, by the way. We're also joined by Nick. That's where the other voice is coming from, and it sort of looks, <laughs> looks like he's got a little um, control room going on there. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. yeah. Looking good. Is that uh, Chan Hom there that we're looking at, or is that... Yeah, that's Chan Hom. Very good. Showing also the 90% chance on a storm in the Eastern Pacific as well. Any questions for us, please send them in and we'll do our best and endeavor to answer them. And um, any comments, we'll read them out on air as well. You can send us a message on the YouTube page right now as we're going out live or send us a message on Facebook and Twitter. Search Force 13 all in text. But let's get on to the storms. Uh, first of all, this is... <coughs> It's uh, a typhoon. Is it category two now, uh, or is it? This is actually an old image. I'm not sure if we've got new imagery on this yet. I've not actually loaded these up since. Uh... That's the latest image, isn't it? So, yes, 90 miles per hour apparently, but it might be a little. I don't know whether the uh, update says something different. I did see someone say it was a category two. Now I'll check that up in a moment. Um, there's Linfa. And that's uh, doing pretty well, I suppose. Um, 60 miles per hour at this point, 6 zero, southwest of Taiwan, so not moving quite as close as we initially thought by the looks of things, uh, but could still deliver heavy rainfall and strong winds. It's going to be more of a Chinese problem with a landfall along the Chinese coast and could also cause um, some um, climate conditions in Hong Kong as well. Nanka is still by far the most exciting storm, I suppose, though its eye appears to have disappeared in the last few hours. It did look pretty good not so long ago, but um, I expect it's going to be some sort of uh, replacement going on here. I uh, don't know what you think, Nick. Yeah, it looks to me like it's, it'll, it'll be a replacement. And I think the models hinted something like this, uh, or at least it hinted at a weakening and initially, and then um, back to strengthening again. So uh, it might be might have been hinting at a replacement cycle going on there, and we may see it come back stronger. It already reached a peak of 140 miles per hour, um, and I think they were still saying that at the latest update as well. We also have Inves 96E. Uh, that is a current image, actually. 90% chance in the next 48 hours and in the next five days. Um, so certainly a chance for this one to become Dolores, or perhaps if it enters the Central Pacific before it gets named, it will be named Ella, I think. <coughs> so a bit of competition, because we have an invest also in the in the Central Pacific now as well, 91C. This one has formed today in the last few hours, and could develop into something as well. There it is, the latest image looking pretty good. Central Pacific Hurricane Center already saying 40% chance on this one to develop. If it updates during the show, we'll let you know. Um, there's also an invest, uh, not an invest, but an area of interest in between those two with a 10% chance of development there as well. So it's all going on in the Pacific at this time. Daniel? Yeah. <laughs> it's, the <laughs> it's the most active, as you said yesterday, it's the most active, isn't it? The east, yeah, the western. The Western, yes, generally. Pacific, yeah. 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 Daniel's getting used to all this now. He's he's getting the hang of it, uh, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's the it's the warmest area, isn't it, around the? Um, not sure the about warmest. Pacific. Not, not the warmest. <coughs> um, 
Uh, visible Cheers. imagery just about arriving um, at uh, Nanka right now. Go ahead, Nick. Sorry, I'm going to say something. He's moved himself, so I'll continue. Uh, visible imagery just starting to reach us of uh, Nanka there. We'll get a better wow. view of that during the next hour. Um, but there's the latest image, as far as I know. Uh, we also have the infrared imagery. Oh, sorry, that's. I can show you a comparison at least from 2 p.m. to the language in the back. Oh, sorry, I forgot to mute myself. Mute yourself, Daniel. Thank you. Um, compared to the latest image, there's the initial image showing how the storm looks. So on the left was Chan Hom and Nanka on the right with a nice little eye going on there. Uh, Chan Hom very disorganized around its eye. Um, and then we get to the later image, you can see how Nanka appears to have sort of collapsed, really, I suppose, is uh, an interesting way to put it. And uh, Chan Hom still finding it difficult to wrap its, um, wrap itself around, I suppose. Nick, are you back? Yeah, I'm back. Were you, were you going to say something? Um, no. Because I thought, I thought you were about to in, try to interrupt me there and you had something to say, but then you muted yourself. So, uh, Did you have the model up just then? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I had uh, the GFS model right here. Let's, let's take a look at that, shall we? So you can see um, Linfa moving into China, Chan Hom... Uh, appears to be making landfall over the, some of the southernmost Japanese islands, then a landfall in China, and then Nanka moving through further south than projected at the moment, just north of, um, not too far north of Saipan in the Mariana Islands, and then towards the west northwest. And is that stalling near the end and possible turning towards the south? Interesting. Um, Indian Ocean there, just in case you're interested in that region, very quiet, nothing expected. Well, whilst we're looking at models, I'll take a look at what we had on the um, the models for the Eastern Pacific and the Atlantic. <laughs> I don't think we'll be looking at the Atlantic, will we? But here's the CMC, let's see what it says. I've not looked at these yet in detail, so uh, we'll see what they say. Um, so you can see these two systems here. The one on the right there is 96E. The one on the left is, I think, the one that was marked at 10% on the Central Pacific Hurricane Center's website. Um, and in the long run, it appears that that one becomes the dominant system. Then there's three little things here, um, possibly two tropical storms. I'd say at least one anyway. And this storm out here appears to gradually develop and looks to reach its peak around here and then moves off to the west-northwest. No storms affecting land, a broad low pressure system here um, which forms out of another tropical wave by the looks of things. The Atlantic looks dead again, um, no surprise in that. But that's a CMC, not particularly bullish on anything there which is, which is interesting. Um, ECMWF then this was an earlier run, uh, showing not much in particular, actually. And then we have this storm forming here in the eastern Pacific. It's quite possibly the 30% chance in the next five days that National Hogan Center was hinting at. Um, and that blows up into a really significant hurricane, actually. Possibly a, well, maybe a Cat 5, who knows? It looks very strong to me, and another storm out towards the west as well. The the initial storm not making landfall, but could possibly affect lands, and if anything, rip currents and um, high seas, I suppose, high waves. That's the ECMWF. Um, GFDL has 96E. Oh, sorry, I missed out the latest run from the ECMWF there. It defaulted to the zero, so we'll just check this again and see what it says. Um, just quickly, we have um, yeah, still consistent with a really significant hurricane forming in the, Hello. the Pacific, and actually something even bigger than what we uh, saw on the previous one. Hi, Michael. All right, Nathan. How are you doing, Mike? Yeah, I'm good. Excellent. What do you think of this that we're looking at right now? Huge hurricane in the eastern Pacific forecasted. It is 10 days out, so... Um, what's the... Uh... Intensity expected. Well, have a guess. 
Looks like four or five, maybe. Oh, yeah, easily, I'd say. So looking at it's either going to be Dolores or um, possibly being... Because um, I think if uh, that invest at around about 135 to 140 could um, develop, couldn't it? Yes, it could. It, the question is whether it does it before or after 140 degrees west. So if it does develop after 140, then that storm could be um, become um, Ella, Dolores. Ella, I think it is, if it's the Central Pacific. Yeah, I think it's Ela. It's ELA. Well, however we pronounce it, whatever. Uh, tropical storm predicted from the FDL, well off to the north of Hawaii, and doesn't develop 91C by the looks of it. Uh, GFS model then, uh, sorry, that also might be an old one. There we are, the 12. Uh, loading slowly. GFS, let's see what that says. Yeah, gradual development, possibly a tropical storm from 96E, gradual movement, pretty much straight line movement to the west-northwest towards Hawaii. Hawaii doesn't see too much from it, actually, I don't think. And then a development towards the end of that significant hurricane here as well in GFS model 2 not as significant, and then gradually moves towards the So it's actually looking like there is a possibility that a storm could form. Oh, I, I think it's quite probable. Um, HWRF has some interesting models on the Pacific Typhoons now. I think, Nathan, hmm. I think it's slipping in, possibly with an El Nino event as well, isn't it? Well... It was forecasted this year. Well, of course, we are in one. All, all you have to do is look back at the... I, I don't know whether it's uh, relevant or not, but I expect it might well be the El Nino event of 97, 98. Um, actually... Which coincided with the extreme activity we saw in the West Pacific that year, in the central and far eastern West Pacific, if that makes sense. You know, we're looking... Um, oh, yeah, if you guys haven't heard saying this for the guys watching... Um, early this year, they did announce that um, they are expecting an El Nino year this year. Um, possibly, and we're expecting more East Pacific storms as well as... Um, and actually, um, I read into something that what happens... And I, um, Have you heard about this, Nathan? There's um, an El Nino event. Um, it normally, what happens, uh, there's a weaker monsoon in India... Um, and well, also that came true this year, didn't it? What? That came true, didn't it this year? It I think so. It was yeah, it's quite a weak. It's quite a weak delayed, wasn't it? Yeah, and also it's quite weak too. And also it um, encourages fewer Pacific typhoons, and also fewer Atlantic hurricanes. Um, which yes, I thought was did. the case with that thing. With that being said about El Nino as well, I thought we had an El Nino last year because. It was quite active in um, the uh, East Pacific, but quite in the it, Atlantic as always. <laughs> yeah, it's was it's been quiet for the past few years actually in the Atlantic. Oh, yeah. we, we, we sort of bashed the Atlantic a bit much here. It's only been three years since 2012, which finished uh, ended up with T, didn't it? Yeah, um, but um, what I think might happen, I think literally, as I've said before. I think that's just the calm before something big. Okay. That's what I personally think. It could be a. It just could be a calm before something massive happens. Very philosophical, Michael. Let's take a look at what the, uh, <laughs> the HWRF says. Jan <laughs> Um You can see intensification from the off there to Category Four, nearly Category Five. I think I can see some five in there actually. I don't think it quite gets there because it shows at the bottom the knots there. 134.7, I think, is the highest at this location. I think 134 is, actually. Um... Not quite. It's around 137, I think. But very close, anyway. And Of course, the models aren't going to be completely right, so there is a fair chance of Category 5, let's say maybe 40%. And remaining strong, Category 4 here, just northeast of Taiwan. Oh! Guess what? 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 Just did it for a calculator. If that comes true, it's going to be one of the bottlers. Uh, 155. Yes, of course. 
And then a uh, significant weakening just before landfall in China, and it's barely a cat one by the time it does make landfall in China. Um, and then skirts along the coast. What and storm's head... following that? Sorry? What storm is following that? That's Nanko, which we're going to look at next. Um, we also have the forecast for Nanka. It's sort of collapsed the eye, at least, re recently. We'll go back onto the imagery in a moment. Uh, but just to look at the models, um, now that predicted 137 knots, didn't it, there? Uh, 137 on that image, which is really <laughs> right on the borderline. Um, and then towards the northwest, weakening again, moving through the Mariana Islands, and then sort of sticks around the borderline cat 3, cat 4 mark, and then a little bit of intensification again, possibly. It's sort of up and down, isn't it, as it progresses towards the west-northwest, and seems to slow down significantly towards the end there as well. Uh, Nathan, yeah, can I just say what's currently happening with the storms? Go on. Um, I'll just give you all the data, yeah? Well... Not... First of all, let me read out some comments. There's, uh, there's, well, there's a few. Uh, Carrie Genova says Nanka will kill Io 2 Island um, in the Japanese Ogasawara chain. Uh, Martinez says if we're entering an El Nino year, and we know that's possible, do you think the Eastern Pacific will go over the entire list, all 26 names? Michael, your thoughts? I'm remaining optimistic, but possibly... Nick, anything uh, to Very possibly. <coughs> so, um, very possibly. Yeah, yeah. 1992 reached um, out without going to Greek. Okay, would you like me to do that then uh, for the Go ahead. Uh, current data? Uh, can I ask a question? Nathan? Sorry? Go ahead, Go ahead Michael. Uh, but Daniel, first your question, sorry. <laughs> Uh, what is the El Nino, El Nino, or whatever it's called? Well, um, do you want me to explain it? Yeah. Go ahead. Okay, so basically, um, all the time there's trade winds in the in the um, uh, Pacific Ocean that go from um, east to west. Yeah. Um, and they're normally fairly light, maybe 100, 200 miles an hour, um, and um. Sometimes what happens, um, you could have a reversal of that, which is El Nino. Yeah. Um, so the winds blow from west to east, blowing all of the warmer oceans over to the eastern side of the Pacific Ocean. Yeah. Um, which then that normally um, contributes to a weaker monsoon in India, decreases yeah. the um, numbers of uh, Pacific typhoons, also decreases the number of Atlantic hurricanes. Oh, right. Um, although then you've got the vice versa of that, which is La Nina, yeah. Um, yeah. which is uh, where the winds are more exceptionally stronger, um, blowing from east to west, yeah. warming up the other side of the Pacific Ocean, and it will do it have the vice versa effects of um, El Nino. Oh. So normally it would encourage oh, right. a stronger monsoon. <laughs> and they normally have more Atlantic hurricanes and yeah. Pacific typhoons, and then Excellent. contributing to a more quieter um, East Pacific hurricane season. Excellent. Oh, right. John, hello. Hi, yeah, uh, little technical difficulties here. Yeah, that was my my fault, actually. Um, you were clicking a link that you weren't supposed to click. <laughs> it, it happens, I'm sorry. No, it, so, it was my problem. I didn't send you the right link. It's okay. Nathan. Yes, go ahead, Mike. Um, okay, guys. So um, I'll be doing the uh, I'll be doing the uh, current data for all the storms currently um, active. So first, we'll start going off to the West Pacific. Um, so Mike, first, do you have anything you can actually show us on your screen by any chance? Um, not at the moment. Could you? Uh, we'll take a look at Nick's then, because uh, he's got some uh, interesting things on his pages. Okay, I'll try to follow along. Actually, one. hang on, hang on, hang on. I think I can get it on. Hang on. No, Michael, you just explain. Nick, Nick will do a good job, I'm sure. Uh, hang on, hang on. No different magnetism, probably. Okay, got it, got it. Crazy. Okay, there we go. Go, go ahead. Then. Okay then. So, 
currently at the moment we'll start off with the Central Pacific. Um, currently have um, there we go. Uh, okay, so we currently actually at the moment have three invests oh, in yeah. the Pacific Ocean, in the uh, Eastern and Central Pacific Ocean. Um, currently, one's <laughs> it's actually we've got one of each now because one's at a high percent chance, and one's at medium, and one's at low. Oh yes, <laughs> that until now. Yeah, so currently we have Invest 95E, I think it is, uh, isn't it? 96 on the right hand oh, side. Oh, 96. Um, Invest 96E, currently with a 90% chance of development. Um, I believe the JTWC could have possibly issued a tropical cyclone formation alert on that. I expect um, so. And uh, also, um, yeah. currently I believe that is Invest 92C. I think it is, isn't 91, it? 91, 91. Oh, 91C. Um, currently, 40% uh, chance of development um, for the next five days. And also, um, no, it's the next 48 hours even. Um, and also, 10% chance of development for an unnumbered invest yeah. at the moment. Um, just an area of interest. Go on to the typhoons, Michael. I'll uh, pop up the track <laughs> that for a while. Uh, yep. Take a, um, at, take a look at my screen. This is the tracking chart for Chan Hom, the latest one. Okay, so currently for Typhoon Chan Hom, um, it is currently a category one on the Saffir Simpson scale. Um, this is this data is as of 2100 UTC. The storm's current location is 19.1 degrees north, 133.9 degrees east. <coughs> Sorry, I've got a bit of a cough at the moment. 4.3 there, yeah. Um, and it's currently around about 657 miles southeast of Kadena Air Base in Okinawa. Yeah. It's um, headed just south of there, isn't it? Yep. Um, the storm's wind speeds to the 10 minute is 80 miles an hour and to the 1 minute 90 miles an hour. Storm's actually gusting into Category 3 strength with winds of 115. Well, gusts actually are 115. Chan Hom on the um, left of the screen there. Yep. Yeah, um, Actually, it isn't. Um, uh, what was it? Uh, Nanka. That's a category four, but a s smaller than. Well, I don't Chan know whether Hall. it will be holding on to Gat four for long. The way it's going. Yeah, it's still bigger as category one. I just don't understand really. Um, and then also now going on to uh, actually pressure of Chanham is nine six five. Unusually Carmen low. Is west at ten miles an hour. That's pretty low. For pressure. Yeah. Um, storms, that, yeah. That that that's usually a pressure of a category two or three. Yeah. It is mm. gusting into cat three actually. Um oh. now going on to um tropical storm lint for the Philippine name Ige. I don't know if Chan Hom's been oh yeah, Chan Hom has now been named by the by Pegasa um name is Falcon. Has it? I yeah. didn't know it was in that area. <coughs> yeah, it's um I think it's just crossed the uh area of responsibility for the Pegasa. Um, now going on to uh, Tropical Storm Lymphia, uh, currently Tropical Storm on the Saffir Simpson scale. Um, severe Tropical Storm on the JMA scale actually. Um, storm's current location is 21.2 degrees north, 118.7 degrees east. Currently located 305 miles east southeast of Hong Kong. Um, Storm's current wind speeds are 60 miles an hour, both to the 10 minute and 1 minute sustained, um, gusting to category 1 strength 80 miles an hour. Air pressure uh, is 980 millibars, and the storm is actually almost stationary as well. All right, John, go um, ahead. Yeah, um, can I do um, Ninka if you guys haven't done it yet? Yeah, I don't think we have. Um, I'm just about to do that actually. Go let John do it. He needs something to do, Michael. Um. Typhoon Anka is currently located at 15.3 degrees north and 151.6 degrees east. Um, 10 minute sustained winds are 185 kilometers per hour or 115 miles per hour. One minute sustained is 140 miles per hour or 220 kilometers per hour. The pressure is 925 millibars and is moving northwest at 16 miles per hour. It is currently located 427 miles or 687 kilometers east of Saipan. Oh yeah, Maybe. by the way, it's also think, a category uh, four, we forgot yeah, to say I, that. Yeah, I was about to say that. It was a category four stop. 
Um, there should well there were typhoon watches in effect. I'm not sure whether they have been upgraded to warnings yet. I'm just about to check right now. Uh, they are still typhoon watches. Here's the full script here. A typhoon watch remains in effect for Agrihan, pa uh, Pagan, and Alamagan Islands. They're all in the Mariana chain. Um, it is 410 miles east southeast of Alamagan. Um, 475 miles east northeast of Guam, and We've the gotten... storm is going to head closer to those islands. Uh, actually, on the next <coughs> screen, I think he just showed some models there, did he? Uh, yeah. I yeah. Um, we just got a comment from Martinez Julian saying, "I'm guessing La Nina triggered the 2005 season. That could explain the 28 storms that season." Constantly, this piece of shit. Daniel, with your <laughs> Brother in the background, thank you very much. But I really do, so I think I let go. Well, uh, enjoy your silly. evening, Daniel, and uh, I, I hope you uh, enjoy watching us as, as we uh, track the storms. Uh, okay. Okay. Um, good night. Good night. I'll, I'll probably still be online, I'll just do it tired for this. Yes, sure. And, uh, we all have our tired days, you know. There's not much for me to say either, so... Alright. Well, uh, come back soon, okay? Okay, lads, see you. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Here's some interesting satellite imagery, the uh, Himawari imagery, which is wow. arguably one of the best quality images out there today uh, from the Japanese Meteorological Agency. Uh, daylight is arriving over Linfa, but is certainly over... The other two storms, the typhoons. And there's an image. You can just about see um, that disturbance 91C uh, on the far right of your image there as well. Amazing. Amazing view. Indeed. Um, Michael, anything to say on that? I'm just uh, trying to find something else at the moment. Okay. Bear with me. Is it okay if I do a little bit of forecast? Absolutely. We've lost Michael. <laughs> I think he'll be okay. back soon. Oh, he's back. Go ahead, Nick. Yeah. Okay, so um, right now we have six invests. I can't show the, the um, sixth one, which is it only has a 10% chance of forming anyways. So we have um, Changhong, which is in the... Atlantic Ocean, or, yeah, no, sorry, it's in the Pacific Ocean, and it's located just, uh, just south of Japan and, um, and west of the Philippines. Right now, it's, um, it's huge, it's very large, and, um, I, it doesn't seem like dry air is going to be at it very soon. So the next I've not actually one. seen a, wa a water vapor map yet. Uh, do you have it at hand there? By yeah, you? this is the water vapor. Oh, there it is. Sorry, I was looking at the wrong part of your screen. Yeah, the yellow is the drier parts. And then um, we have Linfa, which is in the, in the area. Right now there's a lot of dry air, and it looks like some of the dry air could be going into the core. It looks but like it's some, very small. It looks like some of the dry air is already entertained into the system. Hmm. So. And so it appears to be yeah. struggling a little. Yeah, it does yeah. appear to be struggling. But um, it's very small and very weak. However, Nanka is very large but very strong. Or sorry, it's very small but yeah. but very strong. And so it has. Very little dry air well, near well, it. You, you look at the eye, how that's been shrinking, and it just appears to have lost itself at the moment. Yeah, but so yeah, it does it must, be. must be on the way here, and possibly a resurgence later on. It could very well be weakening because I mean the outer core looks like it's weakening, but originally, originally it looked like an eye wall replacement cycle. And a, oh, bit, uh, a bit squashed up on the left-hand side as well. There isn't much to it there. Yeah. Could there could there be some shear from Shanghong or no? Shanghong, whatever, or no? Let me check the wind shear map then. <laughs> Very well. Be. That's something we haven't looked at. Uh, West Pacific. 
There, there is some shear in between the two storms, but I'm not sure if it's really an issue. Alright. Hi, welcome back, Michael. Uh, it's technical difficulties. <laughs> yes, it seems so. Here's the wind shear map. Look at this. Uh, Lin By any chance, did you hear me when I was swearing? No. Linfu is in a good, is in a good place wind shear wise. Though it is on a slight increase, it'll certainly get more difficult as it gets closer to China. Um, Chanhom is in a marginal environment, really, at the moment. It's increasing to the northwest and is already more than moderate, so that can't spell a good immediate future for Chanhom, but we'll see. Nanka is still, I think, still got the best conditions, still decreasing to its northwest um, and a little bit on the increase to the northeast, but the storm isn't really heading in that direction, so... Uh... Looks like the Bay of Bengals and no fly zone at the moment. Well, no storm zone, that's for sure. Um, uh, looks like uh, Nenka is quite a compact system right now. It certainly is. And um, I, I think I just got to look at... Um, I think I, earlier on in this, I think I got to look at... Uh, Hong Kong satellite, and I noticed there's a bit of a more pronounced eye now, but still kind of ragged. I don't think the eye wall is complete around the whole storm at all. No, but still ragged, though. But it looks like a little bit of improvement has happened. Mm. Yeah, uh, well, it's certainly got the potential there, but it's, it, it is quite a large storm, so it, it, could, it could struggle to get itself together. But I think it will. Yeah, there certainly is wind shear in the area. Cause Do you think, Nathan? Yeah. Do you think Nanka could get to a Category 5? Yes, I do. I even forecasted it before on um, the the update earlier today that I yeah. did on YouTube. Um, it's certainly a possibility. Uh, it's less probable oh, now that this has happened, but it's still a possibility, yes. So it does look like um, have JGW. Uh, go ahead, Nick. Okay, it does look like Changhong is um, it's very big, but it's weak because the eye isn't very like you know put together. It's, it's very not well. very not very defined. Yeah, that's what I'm noticing with it. Well, the JTWC's forecast for Nanka has uh, backed off Category 5 just. Um, initially, it predicted a Category 5. Uh, that was at the last update six hours ago, um, but is now only predicting a Category 4 Super Typhoon, 150 miles per hour. High end Category 4. Hmm. Did the JTWC actually forecast a Cat 5 before? Yes, they did at the 3 p.m. update. They forecast the um, Linford's track forecast as well, which we haven't looked at yet. That's the latest from JTWC. Curving towards the northwest, still not moving so quickly at the moment. Um, and probably peaking at winds of 65 miles per hour and then moving inland and just north of Hong Kong as a tropical depression on. Uh, when is that? The 9th. What day is that? Thursday? Uh, it's 9th is, um, 9th is Thursday. Yeah. <clears throat> um, I think the threat to the Philippines is all but over there. Uh, Taiwan, of course, may be experiencing some heavy rainfall. There are heavy rain advisories yeah. over pretty much all of the country. Um, but that's about it there. Uh, John, is there anything in particular you'd like um, to speak about? No, um, yeah, well, I was just about to, to say. It doesn't have to be related to what we're talking about right now. But, you know. Well, there's been some forest fires up in Canada and Alberta, that's what I've heard. And um, there's a lot of rain going on in the, in the central, midwest of the United States. There's this huge swath of rain going, stretching from, like, Texas to, like, Ohio. And they're saying... They're also saying thunderstorms for my area tomorrow-ish. Go, so, Matt. <laughs> That's pretty much what's going on over here in my neck of the woods. Phil Matt. Well, have you still got problems with flooding down um, Texas Way? Well, look at all the flash flood watches here. Good morning for a large part. <laughs> 
Huh. Yeah, Didn't know that was about to start raining. There's a couple uh, scattered storms you could probably see in the radar in the near. Uh, John, what? Film the thunderstorms. Well, I'm not getting any now, but I'll film it if I I'll film it later if they get if uh, if I get one tomorrow. They said a chance. I think I'm getting thunderstorms. Oh, all right. Well, there's some I'm seeing in um, the Western Mass by the Colorado River. I mean, not the Colorado River. I mean, Connecticut River. Sorry, Connecticut River. <laughs> oh, you're in Western Mass. No, I live in actually live in the Bo- near the Boston area. Oh, cool. So I was I I just know it up there because I it's in this state. I live in New Hampshire. Mm. Not too far away. So, so not Old yep. Hampshire, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> they live in Old Hampshire or Old England. <laughs> Only Michael lives in Old Hampshire. Well, Only he, he, sort yeah. of. <laughs> and it sounds like he does as well. Um, I mean, you can you can tell that all, all the uh, advisories there, flash flood watches for a large chunk of, well, the whole region really, isn't it? Texas, mm-hmm. Oklahoma, extending all the way to uh, southwestern Pennsylvania, also including parts of the uh, eastern half of the country as well, southern Nevada, uh, California there as well, under flooding concerns. Yeah. So jet stream um, is probably... Chugging it along. I don't know. I don't know where the jet stream is. I don't know if you, watching it. If you said further north, the red flag warnings in effect in force over parts of Oregon, Washington, uh, Idaho. Fire warnings? Is that what they are? Fire warnings? Uh, yeah, I think they are, aren't they? Red flag warnings? Uh, and dense smoke advisories over parts of Alaska, which had fires not so long ago. I don't know if they still do. Um, there's, yeah, like I said before, there's fires going on in Alberta and British Columbia in Canada. There have been fires going on there. All right, great. Let's take a look at the latest imagery then on the storms in the West Pacific. Uh, we've already taken a look in the show at what we're expecting to see in the Eastern Pacific. We're seeing some storms forming there. No new storms expected in the West Pac, which is a relief, I suppose, unless 91C enters the area. Um, but let's take a, 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 let's zoom in on some of the storms that we have active right now. First of all, Nanka, when it loads. Oh. That's the infrared image there, the first one that loads, and then the visible. Uh, so, yeah, it's, it's, it's a little bit squashed, don't you think? Elongated north to south there. Um... Yeah, it's yeah, it is a bit squished, to be <laughs> honest. Um, and also, I'm noticing its eyes a little bit more. Cl- uh, Nenga's eyes is a little bit more cloud-filled. It's not as defined as it was earlier today. Chanhom certainly reminds me of a storm that's slowly but surely getting its act together. I think this time tomorrow we could be seeing something interesting coming out of this storm. Yeah, probably. Probably. <laughs> well. Let's talk about what happened on this day in the world of storms for a while. There's nothing else just at this certain moment in time. Uh, in the Atlantic, Tropical Storm Arlene in 1971 turned post-tropical on this day. In the East Pacific, Claudia dissipated in 1977. Uh, Daniel formed in 1982. Unfortunately, has left us on the chat room, but there you go. Um, Genevieve formed in 1984. Uh, Guillermo formed in 1985. Darby in 1986 dissipated. Beatriz next year dissipated. Calvin in 1993 made landfall in Mexico as a Category 2 storm. It caused 34 fatalities and $37 million in damages. Barbara formed in 95, Calvin in 2011 formed, followed by Amelia, which formed in 2012 on this day. So 2012 was already up to E by at this point in time. In the West Pacific, Nicole in 1998 formed, a Trammy also formed in 2001, and Nacri also formed in 2002 on this day. So um, I'm going to leave to um, look at the storm, to make ground-level observations ah, of the I storm. Mm-hmm. Well, good luck with that, Nick. Okay. Enjoy your evening. Well, not. I'm going to do it for like five minutes or something. Oh, okay. You're coming back. Yeah, I'm coming back. All right. Well, he will nice return. Do you have thunderstorms over him then? Yeah, we have thunderstorms. 
Um, I will check that radar. Interesting to point out as well that on July the 8th, on, on that day, uh, was the day that Dennis made landfall in Cuba as a Category 4 storm in what would become a record-breaking 2005 Atlantic Hurricane season. Yep. Very good, very good. Um, and actually, the, the day after, July the 9th, would be history uh, with the first proper... Um, the first planned instance, uh, I suppose, or however you want to say, of a, a male name being used in the Atlantic, Bob, in 1979, formed. Um, so, Michael, uh, any news for us over there? How's your weather, by the way? Um, I think um, clear. Fairly clear at the moment, actually. I've actually got some models here for the West Pacific loaded up as well now. <laughs> Pardon me. Um, you can also see Invest 91C on the right-hand side of the image there, so we can also track its progress. Uh, so, intensification all the way for Chan Hom until around this point, just less um. than three days out. Um, and then heads towards China, strong landfall, then Nanka really blows up after around day five, so that's interesting, and then heads towards Japan, look at that, that's, uh, that's ten days out, so speculative at best, but a strong landfall on the island of Kyushu in Japan there. Oh, uh, Nathan, mm. I may actually go because I do need to get some sleep, because I've got a lot of work to do tomorrow. School lies. Oh, Michael, I hope You're we're not. You're still in school. What? You're still in school. Yeah, for another year. Oh. <laughs> and you, yeah. Well, wait, I have summer work to do as well, but I can do it later. <laughs> yeah. Um. The 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 summer anyway. breaks are different here in the UK than um, they are in America. Go. Anyway, go. see you later then, guys. Yeah. Th have a see good ya. night. Michael. What? Thanks for joining us. Thank you for joining uh, us. Right. See ya. Yep. Um, good luck, guys, as well. For um, as I said this yesterday, just quickly. Um, good luck to anybody that's about to ride out one of these storms, and I hope everything goes all right. All right. Excellent. Thanks. Words. Goodbye, Bye. Michael. Uh, okay. Uh, Bacon Hawk. Double A's on both of those words. So he's just got here and has a rather uh, upset face there. Um, so I suppose we'll do a little recap on what everything is going on in a little um, moment. Um, but first, uh, the CMC model for the Western Pacific shows, again, strengthening for Chan Hom. Not as much as GFS as far as I know, but then it heads towards Japan and place about with Nanka by the looks of things and a significant storm here as well out in the open ocean on the international dateline what appears to be at least a minimal typhoon and a weaker system behind that as well it's all going on isn't it yeah yes so so that model is basically saying that uh, Nanka and Chang will probably interact in some way or form yes indeed um, let's navigate back to the latest visible image well, they are pretty close to each other, so it does make sense. Hmm. Okay. Um, let me remind everyone what storms are active right now. So first of all, we have Chan Hom. It's a Category 1 typhoon with winds of 90 miles per hour. That's 9-0, just short of Category 2. There's the first visible image from the Navy uh, showing how it's looking right now. What do you think about that, John? Um... Uh, the eye is looking like it's getting its act together, like I said earlier. I did so the side is looking better. Yeah. i have definitely seeing some convection on the south um, eastern side. Yeah, southeastern side. I'm definitely seeing some convection. And it's all looking pretty built up in the southeastern quadrant yeah. as well. Um, wouldn't want to be it doing is. all that. Yeah. However, it's kind of weird how it's a little bit dry to the uh, northeast of yeah. the storm. There's not a lot of activity. It's kind of strange. Like the storm's kind of lopsided. Yes, I've, I've, I've seen those kind of systems before. All right. Uh, here's an anchor. Uh, oh, sorry, there's Linfa, first of all. So, oops. Yeah. Let's see if there's a visible image out on that yet. Probably not. 
but Linfa is a 60 miles per hour storm. It's still expected to intensify a little. Um, that's an old image. Uh, still expected to intensify a little before moving into China and weakening, of course, and dissipating not far from Macau, I think. And then and we, sorry. And I think I've, I think we showed us the um, uh, the uh, water vapor energy earlier, and there's dry air is definitely entertaining into the system. Yeah. Okay. Uh, there's Nanka. Uh, it was. Don't know whether it still is, but it was a Category Four storm with winds of 140 miles per hour. Though its eye has uh, disappeared, sort of, and I wonder whether it might be collapsing at this time. Um, it might be rebirthed very soon, but we'll see. I think um, it's kind of occluded right now. We can't really see anything in it. Hmm, not sure. It did shrink quite a lot in some of the other imageries that we were looking at before. Um, but that's Nanka, and certainly the one with a lot of potential right now already reached Category 4. Remarkable. And there's 96E in the Eastern Pacific, which is likely to become our next storm, because it has a 90% chance of formation in the next 48 hours and 5 days. Um, it's, in, it's, in the, it's in the Eastern Pacific, right? Yeah, am I the only one that's not particularly impressed <laughs> by how it looks? Yeah, it looks actually. Um, it looks like it's getting uh, its act together. But we, it looks exactly the same as yesterday. That's kind of weird. <laughs> maybe <laughs> it just. Maybe that. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, to be honest, I think 91C is looking better. Yeah, when when you show me that picture now, I'm thinking. Yeah, I think I'm going to agree with you on that. Well, we have visible on all of them as well. So let let's see if that tells a different story by any chance. Probably not. Um, there's the visible on 91C. And yeah. I suppose that makes it look a bit better, actually. You can, yeah. Yeah, looking a bit better on visible there. Yeah, I guess so. Uh, but yeah, the, the, the deal with that, 90, uh, sorry, 96E is the one on the right-hand side, 90% mm -hmm. chance, 91... Sorry, it's 96E. It's AC. Uh, 90... <laughs> With a 40% chance on the left-hand side, near 170 degrees west, could enter the West Pacific. And a system in the middle, caught in the middle of the two, which is the lowest chance, 10%. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, any questions for us in the last 15 minutes of our show, please send them in and we'll do our best to answer them, myself, John and Nick. Uh, any comments of any other variety as well? It doesn't have to be related to what we're talking about right now, but if it is, if it is storm or weather related, we'll, we'll do our best to answer. Uh, just send a message on the YouTube page or indeed on our social media pages right now, Facebook and Twitter. Um, I'm looking at um, one of the comments right now. I'm just wondering, did we enter this one yet? I'm, uh, it's quote unquote from Martinez. Uh, Julian, I think, I don't know. Yeah, I'm, guessing, I'm guessing I'm guessing on Nina Trigger 2005. Did you get that one yet? Yeah, do you have any comments on that though? Um, yeah, La Nina might have figured it. I'm not 100% sure, but because the cooler Pacific, there was also, the activity in the Pacific was way below average that year, so, and frankly, there was more activity in the Atlantic than the Western Pacific in 2005, so, and yeah. That's, that hasn't happened very often. <laughs> that is an uncommon occurrence. I can, I could actually find out how many times that has actually happened but it will be very few. Uh, 2005, the Atlantic 28 storms, of course. West Pacific was 23. Um, what was another active time in the Atlantic since 1950? Um, like, like, like around 20 storms. Uh, 20 storms. Five was busy, but really, you'd have to get over 20 some. But 2010 was quiet. Actually, 2010 beat it as well. 19 20. in the Atlantic, only 14 in the West Pacific, the quietest on record. Yeah. Well, the Atlantic was very active that year, and um, however, after 2010, things started to go on a downswing for the Atlantic. 2011... Oh, did it? Did it really? I mean, 2012 had um, a lot weaker storms, but still, there were still a huge, huge number of them. 2010, 2011, 2012, all 19 storms, and 2012 yeah. still had 10 hurricanes. Yeah, but they were um, quite weak ones. But however, 2011, 2010, it's higher than almost any other season. You got a point, okay? You have a very, very good point. I'm just saying for a fact that activity in the Atlantic in 2010, 2011 was pretty high. Uh, 20, 2012 really did suck for major hurricanes, though. If yeah, Sandy it hadn't have done it in post analysis, it would have been none. No, it actually, would have been one. You forgot about um, Hurricane Michael. 
was a category three. Of course it was. That's that means my stats are wrong, so it's two. Yeah. I mustn't have done the post analysis there, but still one very low. The average is uh, I think it's like th- maybe average. three or four. It's nineteen fifty two point six. Two point six, yeah. So I kind of floated slightly below average. Yeah. However, we still had a high amount of tropical storms and hurricanes that year. So yeah, the activity was still quite high. However, later in the season, analysis kind of showed that there was an increasing amount of wind shear within the basin itself. All right. And um... twenty thirteen was a dead zone too. Twenty thirteen, we didn't have as much activity, but there was, it was not very impressive. <laughs> Um, East Pacific will be an active year as well. I wonder what your thoughts are on possibly the East Pacific overtaking yeah. the West Pacific for a year. Hmm, that might be very interesting to see that happen. So, are they saying that the that East Pacific might be more more um, you know, uh, active than the West Pacific? I just threw that one out there, really. Yeah, it could. That could happen. You know. I think there have been times when both the West and East Pacific have been close in statistical terms. I think they terms. are a bit more um, cooperative with each other, for lack of a better word, because the year in 2010, the West Pacific, as I said, the quietest on record with only 14 storms. In that year, the East Pacific only had eight storms, which was the quietest for 34 years. Yeah. So they kind of they kind of have a strange correlation with each other. It probably makes sense, really, because it's the same ocean, isn't it? It's the same ocean, yeah. It makes plenty of sense when yeah. you think about it. Yeah, okay. Um, let me see if I've got any more new imagery on um, perhaps a close-up of uh, Nanka, perhaps. You can't see it too well there, and it's mm. sort of off the screen now on that visualization, at least. I've got tabs all over the place here. That was an image from... Too many tabs. I'm not sure. I don't think it updates automatically. I'm going to have to find one of the others. Too many tabs. Uh, there's the water vapor again, which you were talking about. What? Any well, any other the, comments on that? Oh, the water vapor right here? Hmm. Um, yeah. Yeah, That it looks like... Um, yeah, and uh, Lenfa, is that the one? Is that right? Lenfa's that was on called? the left there, yeah. That's what I was trying to say, yeah. Looks like Aaron right here has again entertained into the system. Probably it's I don't know how it's keeping a sixty mile per hour intensity as it is right now. I don't know how, but that could be because it's over warm waters, but I'm not sure. I'm always seeing a bit of a burst of thunderstorm activity on Lenfa on the uh, southern side. That's all I'm seeing. Interesting to see. Uh, Bacon Hawk says, Why have our hurricane seasons gone down in hurricanes recently? Well, I think we touched on this before. There has been an increase of shear within the basin. I bet we did. We, did we touch on that before? But why are we seeing more shear? Yeah. Well, let's look at it right now. It's well, the Car- Caribbean is absolutely off limits. <laughs> uh, Western Gulf of Mexico, no. Uh, but the eastern coast of Florida and actually the whole of the U.S. East Coast, they're not not looking too bad. Yeah. However, um, could have, there's also been um, some theor- there's also been some things thrown around that there could have been a possible El Nino, Nino sorry El Nino last year or the year before. They're not sure. Well, it's occurring now. It's occurring now. We know that. Hmm. That that we already know that already. But they're saying how can they how can they not know if it's happening or not? <laughs> it's a probable. I don't know. I thought it was defined rather. Um... Quite clearly, as rather rigidly with with the temperatures there. Yeah, you got a point. The anomalies. I mean, yeah. I don't I don't really look at that side of things so much. I just track so, the storms. So. Yeah, you track the um Atlantic Sea Service if you got that. Uh, the the waters. Uh, the Sea Service temperatures, as far as I know, in the Atlantic are pretty cool, yeah. particularly as you head towards Africa. Uh, good luck if you're trying to get a Cape Verde type storm this year because look at this below gonna... 6 in this whole area I don't see any Cape Verde type storms this year at all maybe one later in August when the water warms up a bit but that's about it to be honest and they're usually the strongest storms of the season usually and yes yes they often are and even the Caribbean isn't so warm the southern half there off the coast of Venezuela and Colombia, 26, uh, less than 26 degrees. Oh boy, so it is quite a cold year. 
certainly seems I'm, so. I'm, there's a couple hot pockets of warm water by um, western Florida, but yeah, seriously, there's true. tons of shear there, so... There isn't, actually. Uh, there not, isn't? Not so much there. So, possible, but you need an actual storm to arrive. You need, you need <laughs> thunderstorm activity there, and currently there is none to speak of. Uh, come on, I want a storm named after me. Yeah. Bad I want Storm burning. Nicholas to come up. But nope. It's not happening. What's that? Um, I want Tropical Storm Nicholas or um, Tropical Cyclone Nicholas or something like that, but oh, it's not sorry. happening. Nick's talking now. I saw a I, I couldn't get between Nick and John there for a moment. Oh, <laughs> I, I, wasn't, um, I didn't say anything. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Hello. I want Tropical Storm Nicholas, but apparently I'm not having Tropical Storm Nicholas. Shocking. That's awful. Um, Quite whilst, sure. whilst we're on the topic of SSTs, here's the East Pacific. Now, um, it's no surprise, really, that the models are predicting a big hurricane to form in the East Pacific, because look at the warm waters here, 30 degrees plus. Um <laughs> Looking very good for any yeah. self there. Yeah, that it's looking very favorable for development there. I can say we're probably gonna get a major hurricane within the next week there if that system that we took, that we saw earlier begins to develop. Well, National Hurricane Center already has it at thirty percent in the next five days. Don't know whether that may have updated whilst we've been on air, but I don't think it has. Ninety percent on that other one, let's not forget. Mm. Um, yeah. But looking at the Central Pacific, um, once you get beyond wherever this line is, I'm not sure what longitude that is, but wherever that is, it's probably going to be somewhere around 140 degrees west. In fact, it might actually be 140 there. Um, you get the, the warm sea surface temperatures around Hawaii. So if a storm... Uh, in fact, that invest that we're looking at, 91st, 96E, the forecast is taking it sort of along the boundaries there of good enough water temperatures, so it's going to be a marginal storm, I think. So I'll explain yeah. it there. Um, as far as that 91C is, somewhere over here, uh, very warm waters here again, 28 degrees or so, certainly warm enough for sustained development. Plenty of sea surface temperatures there. West Pacific, a bit topsy-turvy, actually, but... Um, Certainly warm enough for a while for Linfa, up until pretty much it's landfall. Uh, there's a little cold spot here off the west coast of Taiwan, mm -hmm. which you'll be encountering. Um, Chan Hom looking good. Warm waters ahead. Full steam ahead, I think. Um, Nanka, uh, very similar, actually. Warm mm -hmm. waters ahead of that storm, too. Yeah, seems like we've got plenty of warm water ahead in the Pacific. Martinez asked the question, RIP Atlantic? Question mark. Uh, <laughs> um, currently, yeah, right now. <laughs> yes, indeed. Later, well, we're not going to be 100% sure if it's OIP Atlantic for the rest of the year until we hit August. We're not going to be sure until we hit August. Again, August is the most active part of the year, according to statistics. September, isn't it? It's between August and September. Oh, September, that, that active too, but I'm just saying it begins to hike up in August. Yeah, certainly begins then. Uh, just loading up a final image to show you before we finish up our show because we are near the end of our hour. We yeah. can always go over that hour, but I don't see any need to. Um, there's the three storms in the Western Pacific right now um, in full daylight. Almost. Almost. Yeah. Well, I think we can also see 91C. Yes, there it is as well. And mm -hmm. that 10% disturbance, which I think is that one, if I'm not mistaken. Maybe, yeah. However, both the disturbances we've seen in the Pacific are looking quite good right now. This one is certainly looks potent to me. Yeah, that could develop into a uh, Western Pacific storm if it crosses the dateline. And that's just reminiscent of 1997, isn't it? It had a lot of storm, strong storms that formed in the Central Pacific and entered the West Pacific. Well, a Packer is just one in an example. So that year there were a lot of Central Pacific name storms that were taint, that were also designated as typhoons is crossed when it gets across. There were a lot, a lot of the Category Five storms from that year. Actually, I'll show you a map in a moment. I'll just look at your face first, John. Hi. Whilst I find the West Pacific 1997 map. In just a moment. Can't 
can't see where I'm writing. Oh, there we are. Yeah, here's here's the uh, all all the tracks of the 1997 storms. Yeah, I've seen a couple of them forming out a lot real far east. And you look at it like that, all the Category 5s out, out at sea. It, yeah. And it just reminds you of this year, really, doesn't it, don't you think? Yeah. All the storms of... ripping through the Mariana Islands and the odd one affecting the Philippines. I mean, that one's got a very similar track to Noel, I suppose. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Also, don't forget Dolphin, there's which was... Dolphin, there's Maysack. <laughs> <laughs> the list goes on. Similar year. Yeah. Somewhere. And a few storms coming in from the Central Pacific, uh, too. So, interesting stuff. Yeah. Very interesting. We well, I think that's all from us. Nick, any yeah. comments that you'd like to say before we wrap up here? Nope. Oh, well, there we are. <laughs> Yeah, so from, call quits here. Yes, indeed. So for myself, Nick, uh, John, who arrived a little bit late, but it wasn't his fault there, uh, Michael, who went to bed early, Daniel, who went off air a little early because he felt like it, uh, <laughs> that's all from us, and we'll see you again soon. Updates at all hours we're expecting in the next few days as we see these storms make landfall. Stay safe out there. We'll see you again soon. Goodbye. See ya. Bye-bye.